Oh, the creamy soup. Perfect for winter time. So today we're gonna make two. We're doing it with personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. Yes, first up is? First step up is a potato leek soup. Okay. And it really is a classic. Man, of the two soups we're doing today, this is a lighter soup. But the fact that it's creamed, mm -hmm. or I should say pureed, makes it look like a heavier, richer soup. But it's actually rather healthy. So this is a healthy soup. The other soup we're going to do is not healthy whatsoever. No, it's a bomb. Okay. And so this way I wanted to give everybody the choice of yeah. having the bomb or the healthy one. But they're both very flavorful. And if you have a, one bowl of each, it, they cancel out. Uh, it, that's pretty much how it works. It's science. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what we're doing in the soup today, and I also want to mention that all of the uh, uh, ingredients uh, came from our friends in Whole Foods in Hadley today, uh, is I'm starting out by uh, sautéing some onions. And you can uh, do these for just five minutes or go longer. And what I mean by that is however much time you have, the longer you cook them over a low-ish heat, uh, that is going to give you more flavor. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, you just got to bring out the caramelizing and the sweetness of the onions. So, so you need to be patient. You need to be patient, or if you don't have a whole lot of time, you can go a little bit faster. But patience, it always works because also you don't have to give a lot of time and attention to these onions. Stir them occasionally and go back to other things in the kitchen. And here's some of the other things in the kitchen. Uh, you start with uh, with a potato leek soup, uh, and this is what a leek looks like. Now, uh, because uh, this came from our friends at Whole Foods, this is a very clean leek. Very often. A Especially uh, in season, you can be very dirty. So what you want to do is cut it up the middle, cut the ends off. We'll cut the Are ends. You're going to show us how to do that. I'm absolutely going to okay. do that. So let's Here we go. let's still show everyone first. Well, this is the, a leak. This Here is a leak. Go. So what you want to do is cut the end off. Okay. And then cut into uh, part way up here. Uh, they vary in size, but uh, I could have gone a little bit farther there because you still have some good uh, usable leak there. But here's the thing: you want to cut it in half. And when you cut it in half, usually you will actually literally see dirt right along in there. Mm. So what you want to do is slice it up, even with all the dirt in there, okay. and then put it in water. And what's going to happen is all the dirt's going to sink to the bottom. And so let it. Sometimes you might want to soak it twice, but then uh, we're going to get a big sizzle because this is wet. Ah. Throw that right in. And, and leeks are in the onion family. They're in the onion family. But and they're milder. It's a very mild because you can, but the thing is, it's tougher. So you're really not going to have uh, a bite into a, a, a raw leek. It's not going to do much for you because it's so tough. Uh, but it's also not as harsh tasting. It's got more of a, a sweeter, uh, more elegant flavor, I like to think of leeks. Yes. Uh, so you definitely want to cook it uh, where you don't have to do that as much with the, uh, well, uh, with an onion you can eat raw, but then you know, you're know not going to go on a date after that. That's a whole other story. <laughs> no. Or maybe, yeah, you or should. Or maybe not yet. So uh, I've got here, uh, now I'm just going to to saute this up for a little bit, uh, just uh, five minutes, a few minutes now. Say you are short on time, and this is the great thing uh, about the miracle of, of, of cooking up your foods, is uh, put in the uh, uh, leeks, put in the uh, parsnips, put in, um, and I've got the parsnips right over there, so I'm not going to put them in for the moment, but I've got some in, a great parsnip going. <laughs> uh, so you've got uh, all the, the three vegetables in there. What parsnips are, they look like carrots, they're really good, but you can even skip them if you don't have them, because not everybody has a parsnip in the, count in, their, uh, in, in the fridge. You've got the vegetables going. If you don't have time to saute them, that's why it can be such a great soup, uh, is you can just take your, your stock and pour in straight away. Because what's going to happen, sauteing will give you more flavor, but it's still going to cook through in the liquid. So that's why I like to put the stock in, and, and we're going to bring it to a simmer. And that's going to take about uh, uh, five minutes uh, uh, once it comes up to a simmer. Then you're going to put in the potatoes. And I've already cut the potatoes here. You like, it's always a good idea to put the potatoes into cold water. What's going to happen is if you don't, they're going to turn all brown. So cut them up. You can do these ahead. You can do these a day ahead. Mm -hmm. All of your cutting and chopping can be done a day ahead. And then you can have the soup ready in no time. So we're just going to let this come to a simmer, throw the potatoes in. And that's how fast this is. Right. Potatoes are going to go in. They're going to cook in about uh, not even 10 minutes. You can add some milk. If you want to make it a partial bomb, you can go with cream or half and <laughs> half. But just milk, you can go with skim milk. Uh, and then what you want to do after is put it in the blender. Uh, you can use an immersion blender. You can use a regular blender. You can use a food processor. If you don't have any of those, you can use a potato masher. It's not going to be as smooth, but it's going to uh, uh, mush everything up, and you can real works out real well. Well, Chef Bill, we're going to let this simmer up, and then we'll finish this soup, uh, but also get your uh, recipe cards out, because we're also going to show you how to make a broccoli cheddar kielbasa soup.
We are back in the kitchen with personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. Now we're making broccoli cheddar kibasa soup. Earlier yes. we made the potato leek soup. Yes. And we got the healthy one out of the way early. And <laughs> what we're doing now, what I've done is I've, I've cooked up some more onions. And uh, I've, I've gone one step ahead here. And that is uh, I've made a roux. And roux, as we all know, is uh, French for road. And I have not made a road. <laughs> and nor have you hung out with Winnie the Pooh's friend. That's exactly it. Tigger? <laughs> No, Rue. Rue, I know, Roo. I was testing you. So, uh, so any other ruse that we can uh, um, put in there? Oh, a clever ruse. A clever ruse. There we are. Exactly. Let's cook. Yeah, let's cook. Uh, this particular roux is butter and flour. Okay. And so uh, what, uh, what a roux is, it's one to one, one part butter, one part flour. Uh, so I've, I put the onions in, cooked them up a little bit. I cooked them up in the butter, and then I put the flour in. So, yes. Can I interject real quick? Please do. RuPaul. Oh, we thank oh, you. That's okay. a good one. There, that's now a good we're roux. done with the roux jokes. I, I hope so. <laughs> now that's milk you just poured in. I, I just put in some milk okay. and I'm putting in some half and half. And you use whole, whole milk for I this? use whole milk uh, because since we're going with half and half and all the and butter, why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go over the full gusto. Exactly. So now real uh, now the steps after this are very simple. Uh, I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. And uh, you don't want uh, uh, a full screaming boil, but uh, a nice gentle simmer. I'm going to add the broccoli. And the broccoli, I didn't pre steam it, pre cook it, boil it, I, uh, and I'm using fresh, not frozen broccoli. A lot of folks, uh, a lot of recipes will see, uh, say, why not go with frozen broccoli? I think it's a little too waterlogged and the texture can get kind of funky. Even though uh, it's all going to be mushed up later, I prefer going with the fresh. And it's available all year round. So, uh, I'm, uh, this is about to come to a simmer. You see, it's quite hot. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the broccoli for a little bit. You see uh, little chunky bits in here. What I've done is not only am I using the florets, which is the flowery part of the broccoli, I'm also putting in some of the stem. If you use the stem, and you don't have to because you can also buy just the crowns, which is we all know a crown is a bunch of florets that'll be mm -hmm. on the quiz. But uh, <laughs> if you uh, uh, go with just the crown, that's fine. If you use the whole thing, Use the stems, cut them small, but also uh, peel them. Because if you don't uh, uh, peel them, you're going to get uh, a lot of grainy things between your teeth. So uh, that now, way. Now, why do those have a lot of flavor in them? Is it that adds, why you want to use them? It, it does add more, yes, because you're, you're still going to get some more flavor out of this. Okay. So now, you see, it's already come to a simmer. I'm going to put my broccoli in. And if, if we were to pre steam it, would that uh, speed up the cooking process? Yeah, well, yeah, yes, it would speed up the cooking process, but I think you would also lose some of the flavor mm -hmm. in there, and that's the thing. Uh, I'm cutting this in half just so it can all be uh, uh, pretty much submerged here. Usually I would do this in a stock pot, but I'm doing just a smaller volume here, uh, and it would all be covered. Uh, but to get back to your question, uh, that's why uh, even though it would be faster to cook, because it's already cooked, you throw it in, uh, you're not going to get as much broccoli flavor. And as it is, it's not a heavy, hit you over the head broccoli flavor because it mixes well. Uh, and we've got the cheddar cheese here. Uh, so between the broccoli and the cheddar, uh, which is actually what most of these soups are, I've added the kielbasa to give it more of a heart stopping moment. <laughs> but And not. Not just in the emotional sense, it might actually stop your Well, heart. exactly, uh, which is, you know, sometimes the goal. <laughs> but no, uh, because it's a very rich, uh, b believe me, if you're talking about a comfort soup for winter, this is the one. Oh, broccoli cheddar always hits the spot. Exactly. So now, uh, now here's the longest part of the process. This is going to take about 20 minutes for the broccoli to cook through because uh, these stems uh, really are rather dense. Even when you cut them down, the stems up there. Mm -hmm. And if you're worried about overcooking, there is no worry about overcooking because you want this all to be mushy. That's true. So now, it's nice when you cook something where mushy's the goal. Oh, oh it <laughs> Feel is. Successful. It is. It, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. now, you, you'll look at this. this is, I'm turning this down and because that's a bit too much of, of a simmer, but stir it around so it doesn't burn in the bottom. Okay. And just uh, two other things uh, to note. Once this is cooked through, you're going to put in grated cheese. And uh, I'm sorry, before you put the grated cheese in, you're going to uh, mash this up. Uh, just like the other soup, you've got two choices. You can go with it, just a masher, which I've done with the soup here, and that gives you some texture. Uh, you've got bits of broccoli in there. Uh, otherwise, if you do just want um, just a pureed soup, put it in the blender. Okay. But uh, it's easier, faster just to put it in with the masher uh, and break it up. And then when you go to put the cheese in, uh, put it in handfuls at a time. Don't don't dump it all in because that way you might end up with a big clump of cheddar. Ooh. Not a bad thing, the but this way. Broccoli it, and clump of cheddar. It, clump of cheddar. <laughs> and what I also did, as you can see here, I took the kielbasa, uh, I diced it up, uh, and then I sauteed it, uh, just a little bit of olive oil. So it's really got a really nice look to it. As you can see right there, uh, we've got the, uh, uh, it makes more, 
not just a nice garnish, but uh, it mixes in well and gives you a nice smoky flavor on top of this classic soup. So there yeah. we have it. We have the two soups, a one that's healthy, the other one that is absolutely not a healthy. Splurge. The, like the say, splurge soup. The other one, we call it not so much. Not so, so much. Not, <laughs> right. And, and that's how you end up with these two great uh, warm winter soups. Chef Bill, always a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Uh, we are going to dig in. Oh, and I also thought of rutabaga. <gasps> rutabaga. <laughs> you, rutabaga. You can tune in next week for even more <laughs> Chef Secrets with Chef Bill. And for a copy of this recipe, as always, head to our website, Mass Appeal, later today. Thanks, Chef Bill. Thank you.